Hello and welcome back to another week of my vlog and another week of lattice training. Now at the end of the last vlog I said there was a bit of a problem with this week and here's what it is. So I turned up at my climbing wall uh, the other day to train, big notes on the door saying it's shut until the 6th of January. That's two weeks, two weeks without a climbing gym. Now there is a second one in Chamonix that I could use but the facilities aren't as good, there aren't weight systems, it, it, it'll do and it will do for some of the sessions but I'm gonna to have to be a bit creative with the other ones. So I'm gonna to have to do stuff like the stabilization stuff, the floor, claw, floor core, all that kind of thing back at my house. Uh, it's now Monday, just before Christmas. Uh, we're just finishing work. Hugo's still working, show you in a sec. Um, and I get, I'm gonna use the fingerboard, the lattice fingerboard and our pull-up bar to do max hangs and max pull-ups today, right at the beginning of the week. Now, Maybe not ideal to do both of those together, but this is one of the only times I'm gonna be able to get to do this with the weights I have. And again, the weights are a bit tricky because I haven't got the exact correct weights. I'm gonna to have to sort of bodge it together, but we'll make it work. So warm up first, and then I'm gonna do max pull-ups to start. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. <laughs> So just before the gym shut, I managed to get some uh, 20 kilograms of weight. We've got some more here at the office. So what I'm gonna do is strap the big ones to me, put the little weights into this bag, make up the extra weight with a few sandbags, and they should be pretty close to that max pull-up weight thing. That was a real battle. Um, I'm feeling pretty ill at the moment. I've got like this sinus infection thing. It's making me feel pretty low energy. So trying to pull max hands when you're feeling like that was hard work. Didn't complete the last one, one off. And so it struggled on the rest of them, to be honest. So a bit crappy today. Okay, so whining aside, it's time to crack on with it. Uh, so max hangs now. And I'm not sure if it's a good idea to combine the max hangs with the weighted pull up. So. This could be a very bad session. Perhaps it's better to spread it out to do weighted pull-ups one day, max hangs a bit later when you've recovered a bit. I don't know, but this is the only day I can fit it in. So I'm, I'm trying to adapt it a little bit. And that is the joy of this training plan because you've got a selection of things you've got to do during the week and it's up to you where you fit them in. But I'm still learning about which things fit into which place as well. So this could be a terrible idea. See you all flashes. Mmm, <laughs> couple of seconds off on that one. Couple of seconds off. Bit disappointed with myself. Got to try harder for the next one. Wow, I'm struggling today. To be honest, I've had better sessions. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's illness. I think it's just this thing I've been feeling. I'm so low on energy at the moment, feeling pretty run down. I think it's to do with that. And trying to do this 
I mean, basically, I spent most of yesterday night fully in bed, so <laughs> trying to maybe do the maximum stuff today wasn't a good idea. But sometimes we have to adapt, sometimes we have to do things that are difficult to try to fit that training in. And although that wasn't the best session in terms of sort of like benefits and quality, I'm glad I got it done, put the weight on, put my fingers through the paces, and that's all good. So I'm going to dash home now, I'm going to go via the shops. When I get home, I'm going to do a bit of stabiliser stuff with the band, and I'll talk about more of that when I get home. So see you in a bit. Hey, so I've made it home from the office uh, and I'm doing these stabilisation exercises and they are using bands. And the reason this is good for me is because, well, if you don't know my history, I've had four dislocations on my left shoulder requiring three operations and I've had a posterior dislocation on my right shoulder. So it is a bit of a mess, to be honest with you. So these kind of exercises are really good. Uh, the little muscles they're gonna be good for climbing in the long run. So I've got three sets of these to do, uh, three different exercises I mean, three sets of each exercise with all the stuff on the app uh, to keep me going. So I'm gonna crack on with this and I'll see you guys probably in the Lazeus gym, not my normal gym, at some point in this week. Hey MG, what you doing? <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's boxing day. And uh, I've got to fit in a lattice workout today, but it's really hard to do this and talk to you. But my gym is shut, so I have to do it inside. So today, floor core, leg mobility, and compression. Ah! Um, I'm attempting to do my continuity thing, so five times five minutes, in a very small climbing wall. The smallest climbing wall in Germany. Uh, it's quite difficult to go around in circles. Last one. Hey, so I've just linked the TRX up to a hold on the ceiling. Just doing the compression workout, which I find quite difficult with my shoulders. Last one, then home. Hey guys, uh, not training for a moment because I want to talk about something that I messed up on the initial lattice test for Epic TV. Now loads of you guys commented on this on the Epic TV video and on my vlog that I put out after, so thank you to everyone who did that. Now what I messed up was adding up I know, adding up the time for the endurance test. So what you have to do is you have to hang on for seven seconds, let go for three seconds, back on for seven seconds, and do that as many times as you can until you can't hold on for the seven seconds. Now what I did is I added together all of the time I was hanging on the board, and didn't add on the time for resting. So I think I got a time of about 115, it should be about 130 or something. So what I really did was sandbag myself, um, which is better than making myself look stronger, but it's still not ideal. Now what Lattice did is they got hold of me when they realized my mistake, and Tom is actually waiting on a Skype conversation uh, to speak to me to explain what I did wrong and how we can correct it for the rest of the plan. It's the kind of like personal stuff you get from Lattice. So hopefully, fingers crossed, he's on the end of this line. Hello, Tom, how are you doing? Hey, Matt, all right? Yeah, apologies, I've got, I've got a camera person there. Thank you very much. Um, how are you doing? Happy Christmas, number one. Yeah, and, and to you, yeah. Uh, it's, um, I think it's New Year's Eve, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is New Year's Eve. What, are you out partying tonight? Or are you training tonight? Uh, yes, sad, maybe it's sadly. I think probably for a lot of people, it's sadly that I'm going to be climbing slash training. Um, but I, I love it. I mean, I'd rather do that than uh, do a, a really late... I mean, it depends how good the party is, isn't it? What I was just telling these guys is that I messed up that endurance test. So I added up the total time that I was hanging, not the total time including rest time. And that will make a difference, right? 
Yeah, yeah. So, um, so what we're talking about here is the uh, seven three repeater test that you sent to us for the results. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so what's first first of all really important with this is that these things do happen, and mistakes get made, and you know sometimes we get sent data by um, a climber, whether they're a boulder root climber, experienced or inexperienced, and they come back to us you know, a week later, three weeks later, sometimes longer, and say, hey, I'm really sorry, I didn't enter the data quite right. Um, I think there was some different numbers. And really the most important thing for us to do is to go, okay, that's that's cool, but what we should now look at is, does that make some any kind of adjustment to the training that we'll be doing, and also the interpretation that we put on the results that we see from you? Um, so, am I right in saying that uh, in this case it would bump up your score from the 60% power interest testing? Yeah, so I think I underscored myself, so it, it looked like I was uh, like le less, it's not strong as the wrong word, but like less, less good than I was, so I think it's, yeah, so it's slightly lower. For anyone that has these issues, they should always just highlight it with their coach, kind of like you're doing now. And <laughs> We're chatting through it and we're making the best do because it's just like when someone says six months down the line, oh, I had an injury and I never really wanted to talk about it because I wasn't quite sure it was important. You should always kind of highlight these things because with any training or coaching process, it's like a two-way thing and that conversation should always be at the forefront of it because everything requires, you know, adapting to and moving with the times and things change. You've got to, you know, understand that. Um, so I think from my perspective is if you were scoring higher on that power endurance test, so I think that would probably put you around the 152nd mark. Yeah, is that I think what? so. Yeah. Okay, so around 152nd mark, that puts you much more in line with what we would class as sort of an average marker for that particular test. Okay. And for a boulder specialist, we won't really have a particularly high emphasis on very, very high power endurance scores. And um, so really that becomes less of a concern, less of a focus within your training. And it moves some of that focus now back to the basic levels of finger strength and the sport specific way in which you're able to uh, deploy that finger strength. So you use it on the wall. And what we always find with boulderers is that there's a really good correlation with finger strength and bouldering. Great, you're a bouldering specialist. And so it makes sense to now move a little bit of emphasis back to that finger strength work but also make it applicable and sport specific so it's on the wall and we build that up through training cycles um so i'm gonna go back and change and tweak your plan a little bit okay. um, just so anyone who knows who's reading this and uh or little watching this um if they were to see this same scenario if we have an issue with a data entry this is really normal this is how we work at lattice um We'll adjust, adjust it, we'll adapt with it, and we'll move the time. So, you know, thank you for at least raising this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and work together with it. Um, so, yeah, we'll have, a, have an adjustment on your plan, and I'll uh, get that sent over to you by the end of today. Awesome. Well, Tom, I'm so sorry to give you extra work with that one. I'm sorry for messing it up. I think it's it's a good example, and I'm going to talk to them as well, that like you've really got to read the instructions because there are so many little things that if you mess it up, it would just skew that data. And that's something I've learned, which is just perhaps to take a second, even though you think you know what you're doing, just take a second to reread it. I think that's what I've learned from it. So thank you so much for taking the time. And thank you for the plan, full stop. It's been it's been awesome so far. Certainly from our perspective, uh, is the approach that we always want to take is a relatively rounded, balanced approach. And I see a lot of climbers who, you know, really specialize in certain areas and I'll go, oh, why on earth would I go and work on that? I mean, <laughs> Why do, why do I want to do flexibility or why do I want to do some kind of level of uh, basic endurance or capacity work as a boulderer? But the reality is that really good athletes in any sport are relatively rounded individuals. And because for most of us who have jobs and other things that are going on in life, we're quite constrained with how much time we can put into our sports. And so we tend to default into the areas that feel most comfortable, we're most confident with, or just matches up with our time constraints. Mm -hmm. And so that's the role of a coach or a training plan, is to try and to remind you that don't go down those holes of always doing the same stuff and being very narrow and focused. Try and keep some sort of breadth 
in the training that you're doing so that overall you move forward as a, an athlete and as a healthy sports individual, but also keep some level of focus to the important parts of your, your progression. Cool. Well, Tom, thank you so much. I'll tell you how much of a healthy individual I am at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning mm, on New Year's. Uh, have an amazing New Year's. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for your time. And I'll see you later. Yeah, no have a good one, mate. Bye. So cool that Tom could take minutes out of schedule to talk to me. Cheers, Tom. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying following along with this whole little series. I'll try to keep it going, try to show you what I'm doing. Do let me know in the comments below if I'm getting stuff wrong, point stuff out because I'm learning as much as you. And remember that you can follow along with this plan with me. There's a link in the description below for the Epic TV discount, which is you get the rung and you get the training plan together at a really, really uh, good value price. So do check that out. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna get my training on, then I'm gonna get my drink on. See you soon.